So the previous video, you guys watched us put up all the shiplap in here. Mostly Jamie. Mostly me. Zeb was doing other stuff. We decided before we would paint the shiplap, we'd go ahead and install the cabinetry. So we weren't painting shiplap, you weren't going to see. This side of the cabinetry is not going to be too complicated because we've got plenty of room to put standard size. The other side gets a little more complicated because, you know, 100 year old house, not enough depth. We're just kind of trying to squeeze this room in in the corner of the house next to the kitchen. So we got to get creative on the cabinets. Zeb's going to show you guys how we take some builder grade cabinets and make them look like custom built ins. So I know what I'm going to do, but what would you guys do? Would you push this all the way up against the wall or would you pull it out a little bit? We decided to go a little bit over so that way when you're opening this, it's not right up against the doorway. But also I'm thinking this might be convenient to put brims, mops, whatever, hanging here or at least the broom slid in here. Maybe some aprons. Aprons or um, like the Swiffer. So yeah. This room was feeling big and then we put the shiplap on and it was feeling small. And now we're gonna put cabinetry on both sides of the walls and it's gonna feel real small. Yeah. <laughs> so Zeb is leveling out the cabinets, which is an interesting job in this uh, house, huh Zeb? It is. Okay, can you hand me the drill? Yep. So these, you guys, are just basic, build a grade, unfinished cabinetry from Home Depot. The absolute cheapest cabinetry you can get at Home Depot. We chose the oak unfinished because I do not prefer that like fake plastic wrapped cabinetry because even though the cabinets themselves are MDF, the faces will actually hold up much better because they are solid wood. So Zeb is bringing in the butcher block counters. Okay, do you, so you want me to put this to the edge or no? Well, where are we going to leave space for the So if we leave it the brooms. That's the kind Or are we doing here. a broom closet over so there? So you could leave this open and leave it for like big tray pans and things. Oh yeah. Like cooking sheets. And then you'd have this overhang to give you even more workspace over to here. Oh, I like that. I want this to look more like a buffet. So it needs to come over like that. And you can still fit a broom here. You can still fit pan, pans there. Okay, so just like a traditional cabinet, you don't mm -hmm. want it to butt up against them. No, and then I have this space here that if I want to, I can put sheet pans, or if I decide to use this for the broom, I've got space there. Well, well and that makes it so you can easily get a broom back there to clean if you lose something. Yes. Okay. Okay, so that is level there. And we're gonna put the uppers, the bottom of the uppers will be 18 inches and go up. That's gonna give me lots of good room. I hate it when you have cabinetry that's too close to the base part of the cabinet because then you can never fit anything underneath it. it. Is to hold that level and straight and then hold the cabinet up while I, in place while I screw okay. it in. Oh, okay. Just that, just that. It's no big deal. All right. Okay. okay. To the left. Oops, we lost our stick. <laughs> Maybe for that. Yeah, so instead of like finishing this off with Crown. trim or whatever, that's a lot of area to trim out. Not a big deal, it's doable, but you could put like a little shelf up here on top of this so everything sits nice and flat and do like jars or something that you don't get to a lot of times. Yeah, no, I like that because I want it to be useful. So we're doing a whole bank of cabinets across here. When it's finished, we'll custom build the corbel that comes down on each side and that'll really upgrade these from standard cabinets to something that looks custom built. And we'll take that exact same corbel and mimic it for the open shelving on the other side. Essentially, this is gonna look like a hutch. I hope, that would be really cool. Well, and... But once we, especially once we put the fun feet underneath it and then we put the corbels, like this is gonna look like a two-piece farm hutch. If you got it level on this other side, <laughs> we will be good to go. Well, there's no guarantee. Okay. Actually not. We're way too high. Yeah, we're coming down to it. There we go. You got it? Now it lined up right I just, there. I just moved my hand a little bit. Okay. What is it? You don't pull it up too much. There we go. I think, I think we're good. Okay, so this little wall is throwing us for a loop right here by the door. We don't want to fill the entire wall up with cabinetry so we have room to walk in here. 
but traditional cabinets are about 24 inches deep and this is only 22 inches deep so we've got to do some trimming off of our cabinets building them custom but lucky for us most cabinets have a lot of dead space back behind the drawers so i am going to get crazy we're going to trim the back ends of these off modify the runners and put this back together What are you doing, Zeb? So I'm just popping the back off of this so I can use the old back panel that was on here. And he's already removed the sides. And we just cut about three and a half inches. Well, probably closer to four inches off the sides. What's gonna take the longest is modifying the drawers, but this portion is relatively painless. And in reality, saving us probably 20 hours of labor to build this many cabinets. Yeah, probably. A couple full days of working. Yeah and much less expensive too, if you think of all the components. I don't know how they do it, but. Well, like the drawer pulls and things, you can spend a few hundred dollars just on that. Well, I may still. <laughs> okay. So you can see we've removed this little lip here. Zeb's cutting out these You know, staples. my dad always told me, you, the people who break the most things are the best at fixing things. So that must be where I get most of my skills because I'm really good at breaking the stuff. <laughs> Did you break a lot of stuff as a teenager? Uh, you know, from like eight to about 15, my brother and I were pretty rough and tumble in the house and uh, you know, some stuff got broken. I have seen Zeb fix many a holes in the wall. He can do a mean patch job. How do you think he knows about Bondo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got the glue bot and we're fixing to glue all these. I don't even know if they had much glue on them before. Yeah, there was glue. They do now. So we're just reattaching the backs and Zeb cut it and modified it. The trick is gonna be to cut them all the same. It's not cut perfect, but I'm gonna put enough staples in that the back side of this that's screwed up against the wall will hold the drawers just fine. It's gonna be perfect enough. I'm standing by with the nail gun, that's my job. So this little piece we cut and we're stapling into that. That's what's gonna hold the back on. It actually might make it stronger than before because there was no brace yeah, across the top. Yeah, there was no the brace there. Hey! That's perfect. We've got enough room. When the drawers fit, they're gonna sit out oh. there about three quarters of an inch. That'll leave us room so if we need to, we can trim out the door too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we might move that over a little. We'll see what happens once we get all the bases in here. I've cut these runners down the length that I cut the cabinet off and I've got some construction adhesive because I cut the tab off that used to pop in there. But if I twist them in, they're really tight. So no actual drawer space was lost. We just actually short shortened it to the actual size of the drawers. The moment of truth is here. Let's see. Ta-da! Zeb, you're a magician. No, but I do know how to break stuff and put it back together. Okay, so this is designed as a lower cabinet, so the kick plate's gotta come off. So the reason we're cutting these down is we needed them to be deep enough to hold the appliance garage. We couldn't find uppers that were more than 12 inches deep, and these cut down are 20 inches deep. So that gives us lots of room for like a microwave, toaster oven, blender, things like that. So if we measured right, this will fit right up here. This is gonna be a 90 inch tall cabinet. We left this one at upper depth because we didn't want this high cabinet so deep so that stuff's just getting lost and buried back there because you really can't see it unless you're like standing on a stool. There are two drawers that go in the center right here, so this part will be hidden.
I didn't prime the backs because if I get a little bleed through, I'm not super worried about it. And these are unfinished, so the DIY paint doesn't need primer to stick at all. I'm just gonna prime the front so that way if there is a little bit of wood tannins coming through when I seal them, it's not showing from the front. I'm using DIY Salvation Solution in white, and I'm just gonna roll on a thin coat. You're not supposed to spray this, which is why I am rolling it. It's all natural, so you could totally do this inside if you needed to. So the reason you're not supposed to spray it is because it's supposed to go on real nice and thick, and you have to thin it down to spray it. Yep. You could always try it. I mean, I don't know what would happen, but. I, you'd probably just have to put multiple coats on because it was thinner. Yep, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna roll these. Rolling helps you not get brush strokes. And I'm not gonna really worry about like the little insets. I'm just gonna do all the flat surfaces. Even if I don't have bleed through, this isn't a waste because it's white. So it just means less paint going on later. While Jamie's getting the cabinet doors and things painted, I'm adding trim. What I did was I just took a two by four and ripped it down to three quarters of an inch. Okay, so the way this primer works is you roll on a coat, let it dry two hours, roll on a second coat, let it dry two more hours, and then you should let it dry overnight before you paint it. We, of course, are not following those rules. But again, these are unfinished cabinets, so this is more precaution than anything. So hopefully we don't get bleed through because I'm breaking all the rules. Top, but I'm short, so it's hard to get that. Just priming them. So salvation solution going on all the knots so that we don't get bleed through in those areas. And then we're gonna come back in and roller this. I'm probably gonna spray the ceiling. In retrospect, we always put the cart before the horse. We should have put the cabinets in after painting the walls, but you know. We, we got have, excited. We would have had to mark out where they were going, so at least we don't have to paint where they are. Yeah. We are super excited to get to this part because I feel like this is what makes it custom, at least part of it. The next video, you'll get to see some more custom stuff. And in this video, you get to see the beadboard. This did not come this length. I cut it in the package because I was like, you know, it's nice and tight and they're all the same length right now. So bam, we zipped it down you're to like, what we needed. You're like a carpentry genius. <laughs> when you did that, I was like, that is why I married him. These are just gonna go on the side and this will take this faux janky cabinet and make it look custom. All right, so up here at this spot, we don't have any cabinet back there. It's gonna be dead space, but that's okay. That's all right. We're gonna hide treasure back there and I'm gonna make it a secret compartment for goodies. Just kidding. That's where I'm gonna hide all the sweets. Then we'd have to like put hinges on it and stuff. Oh, don't you worry. I'm gonna trap door that. No, you're not. I'm gonna put it on a little conveyor system to deliver it straight to the bedroom. Oh, I put that in those nails in the top and there's nothing there to nail to. It's that time of night where maybe I shouldn't use power tools. <laughs> I 
Come here. Uh, good luck with that one, George. Don't worry. I'm very persistent. Uh, I know. I've been married to you for, I don't know, like 18 years or something. Almost 19. Gosh. In like two months. We're an old married couple. We're getting there. I'm All gonna right. go do this to the other side while Jamie gets to priming it. Salvation solution coming up. I'm too lazy to use the roller, so it's getting brushed on. It's fine. What this is really gonna do is give it that old built-in feel. It won't just feel like cabinets that have been here for 24 hours. It'll feel like it's been here quite a while. Straight. I don't know. That's a question for you. It's a question for this keyboard. <laughs> so the trim is tricky because this side is higher than this side, and I don't want it to look so ridiculously uneven on the actual cabinet. So Good having luck. To, we're having to fake it a little. Fake it till you make it. I do the ceiling because Jamie seals like this. If you can't hear what he's saying, he's saying he does the ceiling because I spray like this. Or I get like distracted and stay somewhere too long and it leaks. So we're gonna spray with the doors open, get all the ledge, let that dry. Then we'll get them shut. We'll do about two or three coats. We're using Sweet Pickens top coat. It is a nice matte sealer, but it's very washable and wipeable and durable. Jamie is priming this. We're getting ready to do a vinyl tile that is groutable. Yeah, and apparently you got to prime the floor. Didn't do it the last time we did the... Uh... This did this, but you gotta use a latex floor primer and you let it dry and then you're ready. So that's what I'm doing. Tomorrow we'll come back here and see the cabinets in the daylight and probably have to put a drop cloth down over our new floor and touch them up. But that happened. Okay, snap it. We're committed to that. Like tweezers. Legs. Going with that right there. So are we gonna just grout that right there? Or I'll bond it or something. Or silicone? Yeah. We don't have a roller like we're supposed to have, so I've got about You're supposed to do that when you're done. Oh, you're supposed to do it after you're done? That's what the instruction says. Well, you're all done, you're supposed to roll the floor. I don't want it to catch, so I'm going to get the bubbles out now. This I'm is just, that makeshift 100 pound roller. It's about 50 pounds of tile. And you're about 200 pounds of man. Yeah, I'm pushing down on it pretty good. Should get the bubbles out. You know, if you don't have a roller, you got to improvise, right? You know what's nice about this is that it really is beautiful, but it's not going to be cold in the winter. And I do not like cold tile. I'm pretty sure the half bath with that cement tile, I will not be going in there without shoes on in the winter. Little fuzzy slippers? Yeah. We squared on those. All right, you're on. Now we're getting to the tricky parts. I hope that wrote it. It's approaching 2 a.m. We still have to finish the, I don't even know, the laminate tiles, that's what they are. And the trim around the window and put the door casing in and countertops. But we're getting there. It's actually transformed quite a bit today. We're calling it at 2 a.m. In the next video, we're gonna show you finishing up the floor, grouting, putting the countertops, and some special touches that'll continue to make these Home Depot cabinets look a little bit more custom. Make sure you guys are hitting up jamierayvintage.com if you wanna use the paint and products we use today, and jamierayvintagehome.com for all the decor that you need. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY.
I'm so happy to be here with my husband working on the pantry tonight. We're gonna make it awesome. It was a little awesome before, and now it's gonna be more awesomer. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> She's super tired. <laughs>